Hello everyone, this is Hunter at Vapor Honing Technologies and today we're going to be speaking about sandblasting and soda blasting, the differences between both and the pros and cons between both. Both techniques are used to clean, strip, or restore surfaces, but they are vastly different in the applications, the techniques, and a lot of different ways that we are getting ready to discuss, so stay tuned. Pros of the sandblasting process include fast material removal, cost effectiveness, and more effectiveness out of your abrasives. Sandblasting is going to be a lot more effective at removing those heavy, heavy coatings or contaminants like rust, paint, maybe powder coat, or other types of heavy coatings that you need off of your parts and very fast. The materials for the sandblasting machine to operate it are relatively inexpensive and widely available, so it's a lot more cost effective to run in that regard. And lastly, sandblasting is a lot quicker in the way that it works because of the hard abrasive and because of the pressures that are used in a sandblasting cabinet, especially a pressure pot setup. So those are the reasons that sandblasting is more effective than soda blasting. Now we're gonna get into the disadvantages of sandblasting versus soda blasting. So now for the cons of sandblasting, it's gonna have limited surface sensitivity. It's also gonna cause environmental and a little bit of health risk and also surface damage potential. Because this process does use impact, it is more prone to damage your surfaces. When you talk about damages on parts, we're mainly speaking to maybe a softer metal like aluminum. It can cause pitting, warping, it can even remove the metal and change the tolerances. So when we talk about surface sensitivity and damaging surfaces of parts, this is what it means. Just be careful with those parts because it can cause those things to happen. Also, silica dust is probably going to be created when you use a sandblasting cabinet. So it's very important that you wear PPE and protect yourself while you're using this process, or it can lead to silicosis, which is a serious health condition. And all the dust and contaminants that are flying through the air can lead to environmental hazards as well. And lastly, to wrap up the disadvantages of sandblasting versus soda blasting, you have the fact that the sensitivity of your surfaces can be a problem on softer metals or even wood. It can damage those, cause etching, cause tolerance changes. So just keep that in mind whenever you are using sandblasting as your cleaning process. So now we're gonna get into the soda part of this, soda blasting. So as you know, soda blasting is environmentally healthy and it's non-toxic, so it does provide a safer work environment when you are working with soda. It's very non-aggressive, it's very soft, so it's not gonna have a risk of damaging your parts, but also it is very effective at degreasing and deodorizing. So that's one huge advantage that you do get out of soda that you don't maybe get out of an abrasive that you use in a sandblasting process. So as we spoke to a little bit before, soda is basically sodium bicarbonate or baking soda. And what it's going to create is a very non-aggressive form of blasting. So you don't risk on those softer metals like your aluminums or softer pieces damaging the surface of your parts. They are a lot safer when soda is being being used. Soda is also biodegradable, so it's a lot safer to the environment. It's a lot safer to your operators that are using it. Um, so that is a pro that you get with a soda blasting machine. And a little fun scientific fact to wrap up the pros is that soda is very, very good at knocking the acidity out of things and neutralizing it. So that's what makes it effective for removal of grease or grime or oil from pieces. So it's gonna be a lot more effective to use a soda in that scenario if your parts do have greases and oils. So now to get into the disadvantages of soda blasting versus a more traditional sand blasting, process here. So with soda, it's not going to be aggressive enough to remove heavier coatings from parts. So we're talking about like powder coat or more industrial coatings. It's not going to get that very well. You will also have surface residue left over with soda. So that's another disadvantage. And the third disadvantage would be higher material cost. Soda is a more expensive material to work with than other abrasives out there. One, because it's very hard to reclaim it. It's, it's almost impossible to reclaim soda. But as 
as far as the material itself, you're gonna use a lot of it. So that makes it a little bit less cost effective than what using maybe like a glass or an aluminum oxide would be in a traditional sandblast setup. So as we spoke to before, with more of your powder coat or heavier coatings, soda's not gonna be as effective, but will remove light paint and light contamination from the surface. It's just for the heavier coatings out there, you may wanna consider using maybe an aluminum oxide or a glass instead of a soda because soda is not going to be effective with those heavier industrial kind of gray coatings. So that's another disadvantage. And lastly, to go over the last disadvantage is surface residue. Now, if you're cleaning your parts and just leaving them, you know, as is not really putting an after coating on it, it may not be a problem for you. But if you're planning on doing an after coating after you utilize the soda in a soda blast machine, it can leave surface residue, which can disrupt those surface coatings. So it's really imperative that you get all of the soda off. You can either give the part like a thorough wash, maybe an ultrasonic cleaner, maybe just a rinse down with a hose. Anything to get that off of your parts you're gonna have to do if you are coating them afterwards. So just keep that in mind if you're using a soda blast machine, just make sure to get all that surface residue off. So to wrap this up, you may want to use sandblasting for jobs that are heavier duty jobs where you're removing tough coatings like a powder coat and where surface isn't gonna be much of a concern. So maybe if you're working with softer material like aluminum, you may not want to use the sandblasting process because it is kind of rough and will etch those parts and maybe even change tolerances. So just be mindful of that. The soda process is gonna be really good for the reverse of that. So it's gonna be better for those lighter, lighter duty jobs that you don't need a heavy aggregate to do all of those parts for just a little bit lighter of work. If you guys have any questions, please give us a call. We're always happy to help. 828-202-5563. Thank you.